What team did you play for again? Uh, freshman B team. Why? No reason. Could you not? Because like distracting. And quite frankly, when you do it, it makes me mad. Well, how can I get better if uh, I can't practice? Oh here, let me show you. Catch. I'm so sorry. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's just that if you were a good basketball player, you would have caught it. Okay, that's it. Ah! All right, no one talked to me until I've had my last sip. <laughs> All right, news has come from the upper ups that we have a new show. I have the news directly from Sensei Price. Yes, yes sensei. sensei. Lord, you need to stand up. I don't want to stand. We are going to be doing a show on the Calm Arts Department. Oh, like past curfew? No. No one ever came to that. So what's the show about? Do you know what the show's about? Nobody knows. I know, pretty exciting, right? And we will start right now on producing a brand new Lexi, I can't read what you wrote in the script that you sent us all. I was very clear with everyone before we started shooting to be off book. Oh, do I go now? Okay, cool. Uh, so we are actually also going to need two hosts. Now, I myself am an obvious candidate because, I mean, well, look at me. Uh, but let's make Riker a co-host because she's not here. That should be a nasty surprise. I was surprised that he got co-host. I think we got our host. Any, any objections to the host? No objections. Cool. When I was eight years old and still young and naive about the world, I would sit and often wonder why, why act? My answer came in the form of Wizard of Oz whenever I was given the role of Mr. Program Hander. I would hand people programs whenever they went into the theater, and it was strenuous, I cried a little, but my mom said I was the best star program hander that she had ever seen. I like Caleb. He's a cool guy. He's pretty cool when he leaves. He's pretty cool when he doesn't even show up. I like Caleb when he's sick at home. You know, the other day I bro, was thinking... Bro, 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 bro. Just stop. We don't have to talk, okay? This is a studio where all the magic happens on Monday nights. Normally looks a lot better than this. This is the hey, camera... Hey, cut that out. Stop. Don't touch that. It's okay. I'm not gonna let this scary lady hurt you. It may have been one of the scariest moments of my life. It may. Honestly, I'm still really confused what happened. I am very particular about the placement of my cameras. Welcome to Overexposed. The show that believes that deep down Nicolas Cage is still a good actor. But most importantly, it's your inside look to all things entertainment at SAGU. I'm Riker Russell. And I'm Caleb Garrison. And we have a wonderful show for you guys tonight. Including our first challenge video, the B-Roll Challenge. But before we get to that, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Boxed Water. Why drink regular tasting water when you can have water from a literal box? This is a picture because it was too expensive to buy. Now let's see what crazy clips came out of this week's B-roll challenge. Hi, welcome to the first ever episode of the B-roll challenge. 
Our contestants today are Stephen Farina and Andrew Pena. Today, they will shoot, edit, and export 10 seconds of B-roll relating to this topic, sports drinks and energy drinks. Now I'm going to think of a number in my head and whoever is closest will get to choose their camera, which we have the GH5 or the A7. Now, Steven, what is your number? My number is four. Okay, Andrew? Seven. All right, it was seven. Andrew, take your pick. Keep it with the sevens and the A7. Oh. All right, Andrew has the A7 and Steven will take the GH5. Now, let's get ready to shoot some B-roll, shall we? Let's go. All right. I was lucky enough to not have a memory card, so I have to go supply my own. Um, you guys can't come in, so stay right here. I got what I need, got some props, got some other weird cool things. Let's ride. I have no gen, I just have a general idea of what I'm gonna film. You see, my roommate has a, he has a Gatorade powder. Uh -huh. that's, gonna, that's what it's going to be about. And I'm thinking about going to the wellness, getting some quick shots of, you know, like, thirst and sweat. No outside help. Got to do this all on my own. I'm going to walk and do my settings. Save me a little time. Oh my gosh, it's closed too, isn't it? What's this? Saturday? They don't even open until 10. Okay. Well, that's in two minutes. No one's here. Wait for two minutes. Get ready for this. Get ready for that. Uh, so this is a, it's called XS energy drink. I can only order the caffeine free ones, like who does that? But it is an energy drink. It's a plug to my store. Buy this. Challengers, pause what you're doing. There is a red solo cup that looks exactly like this on the fountain over by the den. The first person who gets it gets to come back and edit, no big deal. The person who doesn't get it first has to stand there for one minute. Everybody's watching. See what you will do. Or I could wrestle Andrew to the ground. Still the top. Alright. Summer's back on. At 9.07 you can go and Get back to editing. Now we get to enjoy. Two minutes left. Thank you so much for joining us for the B-Roll Challenge. Thank you both so much for competing and having a great time creating content. All right, later tonight we will learn the winner of the B-Roll Challenge during Rob Price Reacts. All right, so stay tuned for that. Conoce tu agua. Mejora tu experiencia. Elegante. 
intensa. Perfecta. Hi, and welcome to Raw Price Reacts, the segment where we cry while our professor tears apart our hard work. Joining us is the terror himself, Rob Price. That was a horrible intro. <laughs> Try it again. That's I think terrible. it was fine, so we're going to move taught on. taught you this? <laughs> I learned from you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with video number one. Okay. Try to be as nice as possible because someone did put a lot of hard work into sure. this. Okay. I think that, that was actually good. wasn't half bad for an intro class. I think I saw a piece of gear in the shot, though. I saw some kind of a maybe we can oh run it no. back at the very beginning of some the very piece beginning. of gear, microphone or something. But you know what? The After Effects, the lightsabers, okay. the, the lasers, not bad, not bad at all. Who did I, this? I'm trying I to remember know. who did this. I'm not sure. I'm very impressed. I feel like mine was the best, but I'll give this a you close did, second. You did nothing like this. <laughs> Yours was horrible. I don't think it was horrible. Um, I don't think it was horrible. I think the fans need to know that I worked very hard, and it was great. Okay, do dorm lobby life. That's a fun okay, one. That what was we do good. here is I make them just shoot anything. It's mm -hmm. experimental. They just have to cover what life is like in the dorm. So one group, I guess one team member, I get actually it's an individual, just shot it this all by individual. himself. And it actually wasn't half bad. I think it was a cool perspective because it was fun, entertaining, not what you expect. All right. Okay, so we're gonna yeah, move I on. Yeah, from here. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Oh boy. I think this is the best rendition I've ever seen. So brace yourself. This looks like office. And three, two, one. All right. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to fix you, manage you two on a more personal scale, a more micro form of management. Jim, what is that called? Microgement. Boom. Yes. Now, Jim, you're going to be the client. Dwight you're gonna have to sell to him without being aggressive, hostile, Stop. or difficult. Let's oh, go. No. All right, first of all, the audio no. is atrocious. You can tell it was probably camera audio or the mm -hmm. microphone was eight feet away from the talent. You have to have the mics as close as possible. Now, granted, it's a, it's a reenactment. It can't mm -hmm. be as close as like two inches here, but you got to maybe under the tie, just out of frame. And who's the dude with the white shirt? I mean, can we, someone wash his face, get whatever is on him to make him look horrible, clean him up. I don't know who, who is this guy? Oh, wait, that's, that, is that that's Caleb, Caleb Garrison. Oh, hey, Caleb. He, he's my uh, um, assistant I, to the co-host. So. He's horrible. Okay, yeah. move on. Let's keep playing. All right. Bring. Hello, this is Dwight Shue from the Dunder Mufflin Paper Company. Wow, that's great, because I need paper. Excellent, because we are having a limited time offer on everything. Wow, this really is my lucky day. Ask him his name. What is your name, sir? I am Bill Butler. Really? That's your real name? How dare you? My family built this country, by the way. Be respectful, Dwight, please. Stop. Yes, my Okay, uh, the camera work. I get it, you're trying to do like the mm -hmm. office, you know, live documentary, but when the camera just has a, a tentative zoom and then stops and keeps going, it's obvious they're just guessing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to move the camera, move the camera, be organic. This is, this is shoddy work, it's horrible, and it adds to the bad audio, and the actor's still terrible in the white shirt. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, this was my group's project um, years ago, so... I will say that shooting like The Office is a lot harder than they make it seem. So, 
Cut us some slack. No. Okay. No slack cut. All right. So then we're just going to go ahead and cut this one short because we could go for another like 10 minutes. And we're going to go to now our B-roll challenge okay. that we did earlier. And I'm not going to say any names because I don't want you to know who our candidates are. But it is Andrew Pena and Stephen <laughs> Farina. So. There you go. <laughs> What is that? I don't know what it is. It's an energy drink? It's an energy drink. Next to a weight? Because, like, working out, you working know? Working out weight. Here's the problem. I don't, I don't have a call to action. Okay. I don't have any graphics. I have no context. I, I don't know what the liquid looks like, tastes like, nothing, no intel, no info, nothing. And it's just like a little, just a happy look at me, cool editing with the music, and no, it's a no-no. <laughs> All right, well, then we're going to go on to the second one. Hopefully, you're into Maybe this one bit. more. This already sucks. This is... <laughs> Jesus drinking... <sighs> Father, I'm sorry. They had to do this to you. He gave us permission. You got Jesus drinking Gatorade. You, you have... How do you know he didn't? You have desecrated the statue that honors the Hagee. I, he I can need just do I need it names. too. He can just do it too. He can quench his thirst. He's the water of life. He doesn't <laughs> need to drink Gatorade. Uh, I don't want to see this again. Give me something different. This okay, so those are only two. So you have to pick a winner out oh, of those for two. For sure the first one. The first for one? For sure the first one. Okay. At least do you want to know who it was? Least, yeah, who was it? Farina. Stephen Farina. Sh he shot the first one? He shot the first one. And who shot the second one? Andrew. Pena. One Farina, zero Pena. <laughs> Pena is a pain <laughs> to Professor Price. Are we done yet with this segment? We're can done I, with this segment. Go? Thank you so much. <laughs> and now we will be going to Caleb in a Corner. Hi, welcome to Caleb in a Corner. I'm Caleb and this is my corner. Let's talk about the Oscars. The Oscars are next week and since everyone else has talked about it, I thought I might throw my hat into the ring on a show that very few people will probably watch. For Best Picture, I do agree with the Academy on this and that is the Best Picture winner should be Joker. I love this movie when I saw it and theaters and I still love it when I watch it now. Not that I ever saw a rated R movie. The sound design and story beautifully capture a man spiraling towards madness. For lead actor, we choose a man who started as an emo Darth Vader cosplayer, uh, turned into my pick for best lead actor. Adam Driver, who is not a driver, turns in an amazing performance with heart and pain in Marriage Story. Also rated R, also haven't seen it. For lead actress, we have Ana de Armas in Knives Out. And Knives Out, in this movie, she made what could have been a really uninteresting role into a centerpiece amongst who's who of actresses. Here's to her having an actual nomination next year. For animated feature, I was expecting a cute little Christmas flick when I sat down and watched Klaus. 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 But when I, what I ended up getting was so much better. This movie reduced me to tears the first time I watched it, and it is also beautifully animated going back to hand-drawn 2D animation rather than computer-generated animation. It is a truly beautiful and heartwarming film. Go and check it out. The best original screenplay goes to Knives Out, a movie that I did not want to see. I didn't like the trailer. I don't like Daniel Craig. He is a terrible Bond. I am only kidding. Ha ha. I saw it because my friend paid for the tickets, but when I saw these amazing performances elevated by an incredible script by the guy who did Star Wars The Last Jedi, I left the theater, got my girlfriend, and went to go see it again. For best director, I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, not really because it's rated R, and was not impressed. To me, it's one of Tarantino's weaker movies, so I'm really confused as to why the Academy ki keeps kissing his feet. I was wondering if they got any of the director nominations right, but then I saw the World War I epic 1917, and it showed me what a truly great director like Sam Mendes can do. It is beautifully choreographed and shot to look like one continuous take. Only a great director can make that script a truly riveting reality. 
And now on to categories I made up. Best Unintentional Comedy, John Wick 3, Parabellum. Worst Movie of the Year, Heck Boy. I mean, what the heck, Heck Boy. Movie that I totally didn't secretly enjoy, five feet apart in every other rom-com I saw this year. Most Wasted Potential of Liam Neeson, Cold Pursuit. When we come back, we'll have a special interview with Evan the Astro Kid. The people who write Wikipedia pages won't have Wikipedia to research the subject they are writing about. Eating fruit is technically eating pregnant plants. You hear that, vegans? While driving a car, you can be outside but still inside. Moving but still. Welcome back. Joining us is Evan Jones, also known as Evan the Astro Kid. <laughs> doing good thank you so much for joining us tonight Evan. absolutely absolutely okay so you have a new album all out called lemons and i noticed that on the track list there's not a song called lemons so can you please give us an idea as to why you named it that so it, it kind of has a dual meaning the first is for the most part a parallel of my life you know the idea of when life gives you lemons just the the story of my life and what i've been through and different experiences you know with swing you know i was in jazz band and you know, different things like dreams where I had these big aspir aspirations and I don't know if I said that right, but just big visions. And, um, but also it has another meaning to where, you know, a lot of people, they get this idea of, you know, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Well, if you don't have the proper ingredients, it's going to be pretty, it's just going to be nasty lemon juice. Um, but what people will do is because they don't have the other ingredients, they will just continue to take the, this nasty, bitter lemon juice and it'll really gunk up and fill up their insides. Um, but it's this message of, you know, as a believer, you are, you have access to the living water from Jesus Christ and the sweet blessings from God the Father. And then all together that creates the lemonade and sustains you and fills you up. That is a super cool concept. Now that you've explained it, I love the name Lemons and that's so cool. Yeah. You've been creating content for a while now. What's been your inspiration? Um, well, I've always been musical. My family was also, we were just a very musical family. Um, I grew up playing the drums and, you know, I was also, my family's just a bunch of, you know, we're all big nerds. And so, you know, taking this music and this love for music and, you know, digitally orchestrating it and remastering it and making it exactly how I like it is just kind of a best of both worlds. And, you know, I'm more of a chaotic creative, so I just love doing it for doing it. And if you could pick one song on the entire album that is your favorite, which one would you pick? Oh, golly, that's such a hard question. I would have to say probably, probably Dreams, just because that one to me is a direct representation of how I portray myself and just that visionary but still kind of peaceful and just, just flowy kind of mentality. That's really what I try to exude and put out to people. And I would say that your music is very true to your personality. What would you give advice, um, or what piece of advice would you give to somebody else who's maybe battling with being true to their music or to whatever they're interested in? Yeah, um, I would, I personally would love for people to really push into the idea of God giving them their identity. Because a lot of times they will try to create their own identity based off of, you know, what they want and not really who they were created to be. And so if you really allow God to kind of poke inside of you and look inside of you, then using what he gives you, you know, originally with my old music, I was trying to take this, you know, traditional rap angle, but God was really showing me that, you know, I'm a big nerd, I'm a gamer, you know, different things like that. And so using that identity and, and who God has made me to be, and then just putting it in, in the music. I mean, this conversation has been so good, and I love everything about you. I love your personality. I love your music, and I am so thankful that you came here to give us a little bit of insight, and everybody, y'all need to go listen to the album Lemons. It's on all streaming platforms, so thank you so much for joining us, Evan, and now we're going to head over to... In the jungle, the nighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Thank you for joining us for our misadventures here on Overexposed. With my lover, gotta get with my, gotta get with my friend.